All right, so uh, hey everybody, I'm Chris, and we're going to talk about uh, some exciting list formatting related type things. Really exciting. Uh, I am going to show in a few things I have shown before, but I'm going to show it in a slightly different way uh, in terms of some tooling and how you can set that up. Uh, we've had some questions related to uh, the SP formatter, JSONify setup. I've had also an update in JSONify I want to show off. So I'm going to show off some of that and kind of an advanced setup for you. And uh, we'll get going. But first, I will just remind you of what I'm talking about when I say SP formatter. All right, so this is something that's available through PNP. It's developed by Sergey Sergeev, right? So it's two-part extension, right? So there's two parts to it. There's an edge extension, which I'll show up first. And then for the advanced scenario, there is a VS Code extension, uh, which we'll take a look at. It's going to do really cool things like uh, provide much better IntelliSense by swapping out for an extended schema, right? It's going to provide live preview right on the browser and so on. So it, this is something that if you're writing formats, uh, you're going to want to use this right away. Okay, so let's go take a look at it, and then we'll jump into some other things. Ooh, ooh, back to our common horse's site here. And we've got ourselves a letters uh, list where we are storing some letters that the horses are writing, right? We've got some automation around that. These are some form letters uh, that they like to send out, All right? Either way, this part doesn't matter so much as that we have some opportunities to apply some formats. So we're going to do that. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I already have the extension installed, right? So this is the extension, and we'll pop in uh, some links to that sometime here in the chat, but they're also at the end. So you can get a screenshot of all of those links. The big idea is I install this to Edge. I can also install it to Chrome. I'm just demoing an Edge because this is a Microsoft call after all, right? But it works on either one. Uh, so you just get that installed. Once you've got that installed, you'll find it in your extensions over here, SP Formatter, right? And you can turn that on, right? So I've got that enabled. Um, and we'll go from there. So what happens is I come here at column settings and I format my column. And when I go to advanced mode, I get this enhanced formatter is enabled, right? Uh, that allows me to do a few things. One thing, right, I can turn it on and off, right? And you'll see, you know, I've got this nice little thing here. I can make it a little bigger. Ooh, so I have an even more writing room, right? Because this is a little cramped if I'm trying to write full format. For what I'm trying to write, that's fine. But you'll see I get this nice IntelliSense, right? So I can say my Elm type, or I just say a div. Right, so it's, well, woo! <laughs> well, we'll pretend, uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Let's try that again. Let's format that column again. All right, let's go down here and we'll say Elm type. Right. I've got something going on with my IntelliSense here. All right, div. And we'll say our text content, in this case, is at current field. Let's just preview that. All right, so let's turn that back on so we can see it really happened here. So what I did there, right, all I did was I took away that uh, option to see more or not, right? So we can take that off and you can see what I mean. All right, that guy that is collapsing it down, right? So I'm just a very basic format that allows me to see the full text of the letter. wow -y! But the idea here, I wanted to point out one thing here, is when you do SP formatter, you'll notice this guy right here, this giant schema link goes away. And that is a little confusing. Uh, the reason that's going away is because it's being swapped out behind the scenes for an enhanced uh, schema, right? So that schema has a lot better uh, support for some of the uh, properties and so on. So you get nice uh, IntelliSense uh, there, right? So you can see the at current field, right? Might be, uh, I'm not getting my IntelliSense, but you get better IntelliSense. Just trust me on it. All right. And you get the idea you can edit all that stuff. So that is the browser extension that I wanted to show you there. Okay. So that's great. We're going to be using that more in just a moment. I'll save that because that's beautiful. And we'll just keep that going. But now I wanted to talk about uh, some other tools, right? So there is a VS Code side to that. In fact, the easiest way to find that is when you go to the SP formatter here, use VS Code, check out the VS Code extension, right? And you click on that link and you'll go right to it. Uh, for our purposes, we're just going to go directly to the repo. And I want to talk about the samples, right? So this is great that you could do this. And if you happen to know exactly what you want to write, hey, that's great. Most of us are going to start with some samples, right? And so I'm just going to go to aka.ms slash list hyphen formatting, right, like that. And that's going to take me to this site. And this site has all of the samples and everything listed on it. It's got groupings and all their tools listed and so on. Uh, but for our purpose today, I'm just going to click on GitHub up here, right? So that's going to take me right to the GitHub repo. And this is where everything's stored. Now, if I wanted to edit this, um, I want to take a look at some of the stuff. The easiest way to do that is get a GitHub account. They're free. And once you've got one, you can hit this fork button here. Uh, and for some of these things, again, I'm going to highly recommend that sharing is caring session. Uh, you know, David uh, and, some, and the team there do a really great job of kind of demystifying some of this uh, GitHub junk. 
But for our purposes, we're going to create a fork. I've already created one. All that does is it creates a copy of the repo over in your stuff, right? So now it's at my link, right? Now I've got a list formatting repo. I can see it's up to date. I can always resync it if I need to get into changes back and forth. But the point is I can come in here and I can start customizing samples. I can create new samples. I can create my own folders, whatever I want. And I've got access to everything. Now I come here to code, right? And if you want to just download it to your machine, you can just download it as a zip and don't worry about it, right? Uh, but you can also say open with GitHub Desktop, which is what I like to use to manage things. But for our purposes today, we're going to do something a little bit different, which is code spaces. So code spaces is basically a virtual machine uh, with a nice uh, VS Code front end for you. Uh, you can work with that. Uh, everybody gets so much per month free. Uh, if you've got a pro account, you get even more. And you can pay for even more if you want. I'm sure they'll be happy to take your money. But everybody can get a free one. I've got and set up one. If you haven't yet, you just hit this plus button and you get some options. I've created the very basic uh, very low resources expert barnacle. That's the name they assigned to me. I'm going to click on that. You'll notice I get a nice VS Code editor right here um, in the browser. Right? It's going to load up. It's going to load up some of my extensions because I've got uh, synchronization turned on in Visual Studio. So if you've done that yet, you want to do that. All you do is you click on this little gear and setting sync. And when you do that, all of your extensions, your themes, right, all of that stuff is going to come over nicely even here uh, in Code Spaces, which is cool because again, I'm still in Edge, right? Wowie. And in fact, you can tell it's got my settings because it moved everything over to the right because I like it that way because I come from the old school Visual Studio uh, days, right? Uh, but, you know, so yours might be on the left, just as an FYI. But here I've got that whole repo with all those samples, right? And I can easily browse them, right? So you can see I've got one open here. That's cool. I can see all this stuff. Uh, you know, let's turn on word wrap because there you go. Now we can see it a little better. And so on. that's neat. Uh, now I'm going to show you a couple extensions you might want to install here. So the first extension I want to show you, right, if we come down here. So these are the extensions, is VS Code Pass. Oh, yeah. So I did not make this extension, but I highly recommend it. Uh, but I did contribute to it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that, and you'll see what that adds is this little VS Code pet right here. So the default is a cat. Get out of here, cat. We don't need no cat. Bye. All right. Instead, we're going to add ourselves. You might have guessed it, a horse. All right. So we've got lots of choices here. We'll add a a sock beige smoky sounds like a great name All right no i didn't hit enter <laughs> oh there is smoky right so now we've got a little horse so we can have that while we code but you might have noticed uh there's even a warrior horse down here right oh the tennessee stud is a perfect name All right there we go now they're in love and they can play right they've got fire and so on you can toss some balls to them whatever you want they are completely useless. They do nothing for this formatting or any of your code. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, there you go. That's exciting. Now let's take a look at a different extension. Now that's, again, everything I'm showing you here, I'm showing you inside code spaces, but all of this works with Visual Studio Code installed on the desktop as well. Okay. Uh, you're right. Let's get rid of you back. And let's take a look at another extension, right? So we talked about um, a couple other extensions. So this one I want to talk about is JSONify. This is extension I put together here. Let's open this guy up and let's just put him in another side window here. Right, so this guy, and we're not going to show some of the features it has. Uh, some of the main features it has, though, is you can right-click on an SVG or an HTML file and generate a format directly from it. And in fact, you can keep those live, so you can keep editing the HTML, and it will update the JSON format uh, live as you type. So that's exciting, but I'm not going to even show you that part today, uh, although I have gone over that in a few past demos if you want to check those out on our YouTube channel um, or just check out the extension itself. Uh, what I wanted to show here um, is that this stuff can be hard to read, right? So you'll notice this stuff is a JSON file, right? So it's, I'm going to put language in big quotes here, JSON language, right? Um, and it's the idea of it's a property and an attribute, and it's got the squigglies and so on, and VS Code understands that, which is why you get blue here and you get orange here or whatever your theme decides, right? And that's cool. One of the things JSONify added in its last update, if I enable that, um, is the idea of syntax recognition, syntax highlighting of an embedded language within JSON. All right, so now we have this idea of horse script. There wasn't an official name that I was aware of, so I got to name it since I made the uh, syntax highlighting uh, stuff, right? So there it is. And in fact, there's even a color theme called Warrior Horse that's included. It's a dark theme uh, that kind of makes that easier, takes advantage of some of the advanced tokenization that is available inside that language. So. It makes it a little bit easier to read this. Uh, it's still a bit of a mess because it's giant altogether, but yeah, I see the idea is that it starts to make it so I can see, oh, that's the if statements and so on, right? So I can begin to edit this directly. So that's one of the things JSONify is adding, and that's really exciting. All right, so now 
We mentioned one more extension, all right? And that's the ESP formatter right there. So this is the ed, the VS Code version of it. All right, so we've got the VS Code version here. Um, I've already got that one installed. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide some of that same kind of um, extended um, uh, intelligence here right inside VS Code and so on. And that's really helpful that you could do. But the one thing that I really like is you could right click and you could say start a new session, right, with SP Formatter. And normally when you do that on VS Code Desktop, that's going to open up a port and a little server on your local host, right? Now we're in code spaces, however, right? So we see this port just highlighted up here. And now I've got this port here on 11232. Exciting. It's always that port. Now, if I want that to show up, so that I can edit this content here and have it show up over there. Well, I can, so let's get that over there. So let's do this a little better. Uh, one of the things I need to do in order to make that happen right now is because it's looking on localhost, I need to make this part visibility public. There we go, very exciting. And now I need to run a little HTTP server locally here. So this is something I'm gonna just run out of NPM, use a bunch of different ones of these, this is the one that's really easy. You can use this one, it's free. All right, so I've got a little HTTP server, so I'm gonna go over to my terminal. And I'm going to make sure I've got Node. I use NVS, so let's pick Node. It doesn't matter particularly which version of Node. All right, so now I've got NVS, and I type NPX, because I've already got installed, HTTP server. I put that port, All right? Well, let's, play, let's make sure we can actually see what we're talking about. There we go. So what is that port? That is 11232, All right? And one of the nice things about HTTP server is it's going to basically serve a local public folder. I don't have anything in there. And what it's going to do is it provide a fallback. So anything it can't find in my local public folder, it could pull from somewhere else, which is what we're going to do here. So I'm going to go copy this URL. We'll click on that little button. The terminal, and I'm going to say dash capital P. That's the fallback. Just press Enter. That's going to start up a little server. And what that's going to do is any request for localhost at that port that I don't have locally is going to be forwarded from my code spaces. Wowee. So then that means I can come over here. All right, and I come over and I can say, uh, let's uh, let's close all that. Uh, let's go to column settings. Let's format this column. All right, advanced mode, because we have this uh, turned on. Let's see if we can get that to uh, hook up. There it is. So you can see that it already pulled it in, right? So I was on a date format. Now, this is great, right? We're in two separate windows. So let's take advantage of something that Edge has, right, which is the split view. So I can do the split view here and I can pick the tab that already exists. So there we go. So now I've got it right inside one tab. I've got my VS code code spaces here. You know, let's make that so I can really see it. Um, and I have my preview over here. So I've got the full editing here. So I can even do things like, hey, you know, I like this. This is a really cool format. In fact, it's one of our top formats, right? I come over here, but I say like, I don't want to write all of Thursday, all right? So I can just backspace and you can say I wrote third, all right? And you'll see it updated it right as I was typing it. How cool is that? So the idea is I'm just editing this stuff live, right? I can see that preview happen directly. Um, as long as I don't hit save, no one else is seeing this, right? This is just on my list, preview temporarily, and I can go forth like this. Say I've got a different one. All I have to do is just start a new session over there and it should pick up on this other format sometimes. There you go. And so I have a different format. So if I wanted to go through and like test out some of these date formats or anything else, this is a really, really easy way to do. So I'm directly in the samples repo. Right, I can synchronize those and I can just browse through these. I can find individual wants, start a new session, I can preview them right here, and I can even edit them, right? So if I say like, yeah, for what is that, July, is that a sunflower? That's a lovely one, but psh, not anymore. July is the month of, you know, we'll say something else. Uh, let's see, oh, uh, well, a horse, of course. Right, so there we go, there we got a horse instead. But the idea is I can edit these directly I can see the syntax highlighting directly here inside VS Code or inside Code Spaces as needed. Um, and I can work between those uh, directly as needed. And so far, right now, the only thing I've needed to have running on my local machine is this HTTP server. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, I'll see if I can change that around, put some uh, requests in to make that work a little better for us so we can specify where we want to pull that stuff. Uh, but let me know how you're using this stuff. If this stuff is too difficult, if this is hard, all that kind of thing, that'd be great to know. But let's go. Do a quick review of all that. There we go. Those are the cool sound effects. All right, just to review. There's JSONify. Again, it's got uh, some bunch of other features I did not show um, in terms of automatic conversion, right? So converting those to SPLIST formats. So it's got support for full-on 
uh, inline styles, but it also has for like a style uh, tag and all that. So you can specify classes and so on. And it'll map all those over. It's very, very cool. I like it. There we go. Moving on here. And this is, of course, that syntax highlighting with the horse script. Um, now, it is set up as an embedded uh, language. So the idea is that it's only extending the JSON language definition so that it recognizes that you switch over to horse script whenever you start a property with that equal sign, right? And then it's going to start doing the tokenization. It does not actually change anything about your file. It's only a display thing um, in terms of the tokenization. So you're not changing any of your JSON files or anything like that. Don't worry. Uh, and the other thing, so it is technically its own language. So if you create a .horse file or a .na file, you can write this uh, horse script directly, should you want to. I don't know what you would do that for, but you can, and that's exciting. All right. So here's that setup, just so everyone can see it, because uh, I went over it really quickly. The idea is this is your kind of standard setup. So if I've got VS Code installed on my machine, right, whether it's Windows or Mac, Linux, doesn't matter. I've got a VS Code. I've got those two extensions, JSONify and SP Formatter installed, right? I forked the repo or whatever. Right, that's awesome. And then I've got this other SP Formatter Edge extension installed. Boom, I can do all those edits live and it's exciting and everything just happens magically. Uh, if you wanted to do slightly different setup, which is the GitHub code spaces, right? So this is some details about it. It's free-ish, that's important to note. Um, right, generally, if you're just using this for this formatting and you're closing your code space after you're done and it does shut down automatically, I don't think you're gonna run into many problems there. Uh, but just keep it in mind that potentially, uh, if you're running this all the time because you're doing formats 40 hours a week, well, then maybe, right? And there you go. Some notes there about making sure you want to do it with the HTTP server. And this is that HTTP server. Wowie, they have a turtle logo. That's pretty sweet. And then finally, this is that slightly modified version if you're using code spaces. The only real difference here is that I've got that HTTP server running in the middle uh, to kind of facilitate that stuff here. And then here you go. Here's some exciting links for you. So here's all those links. Uh, if David hasn't posted them in the chat yet, shame on David. Uh, I'm sure he'll do it uh, any moment now. Uh, but check these out. Again, everything I've shown you here is free and available uh, to you. Some of this is definitely advanced scenarios, so please keep that in mind. You do not have to do this to do formatting. You don't have to use any of these tools. They just make your life a little easier. Okay, and that's it for me. Whoa.